Hey logical people, CKV here. In this tutorial, we will learn everything that you need to know to, to start building awesome looking websites with the help of latest bootstrap. But I think the first question, the obvious question that comes to mind is this. Why on this green beautiful earth should you care for bootstrap? And I, th I think it's a fair question and it's important to answer this question before starting with this tutorial. Number one, because everyone else is using it. I know for a fact that LinkedIn, Twitter, Spotify, Airbnb, everybody is using Bootstrap. Second reason is that it's 100% free, so you don't have to pay any royalty to anyone. And the third reason is that the front-end developers are paid really well. I believe that if you want to learn a front-end development framework, Bootstrap is the one to go for. And if that is not enough motivation for you, why don't you come with me and I want to show you something. I have arranged two websites for you. The first one is called the BigUglyWebsite.com. Imagine that you Google something and you land up to a website that looks something like this. Or remotely like this. Something like this. Would you ever, like literally ever, go and do any kind of business with this website? And I think the answer is obviously no. And now look at this website, SpeechAI.com. When you look at this this app, this looks far more cleaner, super minimalistic, and it looks a bit more engaging. You can actually see different contents and separators, sections, and you know color contrast and things like that. So let's get started. So before we get started, I want you to remember how you learned to ride a bike. Like literally close your eyes and think about the first time that you were able to ride a bike. Did someone, you know, maybe your mom or your dad just ask you to hop on and try it? Or you did or you did something radical? And when I say radical, I'm looking at this. Not that dude. So before riding a, a bike cycle, did you actually go about and learn about pedals, chains, cranks? Did you learn about maintaining balance for forward motion? Or did you went ahead and got an advanced degree in circular motion or got a PhD in physics? And if answer to all those questions is no, then you are on, on a right tutorial because we will not learn bootstrap the way you see on the screen right now, but we will learn bootstrap this way, which means that we're going to do things and um, I am, we're going we're gonna to approach a problem and we're going to learn the tools along the way as and when required. And I would, I would argue that not for just this tutorial, but anything that you want to learn in life, you should follow this approach. Because this gives you a holistic picture and it gives it, it helps you understand the why purpose of doing something rather than just mugging up the concepts and then not able to use that or apply that in real projects. Beautiful. I think with that, the first question that comes to mind is how do I get started? And as, and as always, we're going to go to Google and look for how, how the hell do we get started with Bootstrap. So I'm going to go to Google and I'll search for Bootstrap 5 because 5 is the latest version of Bootstrap. If you click on this, the first link that appears, it will take you to basically get started page. And there's, let me zoom in a little bit. So there are lot, there's a lot of information um, for getting started with Bootstrap. It's the world's most popular framework for building responsive, mobile first uh, website, blah, blah, blah. But the quickest way to get started is what they are emphasizing here. Um, so the bootstrap offers two things. Number one is CSS, which basically gives the styling to any page. So the way you see the button, um, you know, the colors, the padding, the spacing, and you click on it, the way it moves, the mouse over effects, everything comes from the CSS. And bootstrap also comes with a bundle of JavaScript. Now this JavaScript helps a lot of things that are related to programming. For example, when you click on a button, this dialog box opens up when you click on this button um, something opens up on the screen as an overlay so these effects come via javascript so when you click on this button this overlay goes back so all these effects needs to be handled by javascript so again just for a quick quick pointer css is for styling and javascript for you know functionality that needs some sort of programming So the first thing that I really want to talk about is how to use a bootstrap on a standalone project. 
But just to give you like 100% concrete understanding of how Bootstrap works, it's important to understand how Bootstrap can be installed on a standalone project. What I've done, I've arranged a test project for you. And as you can see, on this test project, we have nothing much going on. The couple of things that we have is this meta tag, which is important because with this meta tag, Bootstrap understands that, okay, um, everything needs to be device uh, dependent. Then I've given it, a, some, give it some title. So this is just plain test.html page. And what I will do, I'm going to go and delete this. I'm going to delete this as well. I'm going to save it. And what we will do, we will go and open this code in a browser just to see how this looks. So here you go. Um, this is my test HTML. And you can see that we have hello world. So I'm going to go back to bootstrap.com and I'm going to copy the CSS from this like that. And I'm going to paste it in the head section like this. Now, I want to style this head in a way that it should look a little bit better. Um, maybe some padding, maybe some styling. And to do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for the documentation that we have received from Bootstrap. So if I go here and I say look at layout, I've got something called containers. And, okay. It says our default container class is responsive, fixed with container, something like that. So I'm just going to copy this. And we'll see if this class works for us. I'm going to cut the hello world here. I'm going to paste here. I'm going to save it. And if we go back to our test.html and refresh the page, now you see that it got some sort of styling. It, it moved to the top, which is good. And now let's see what else can we do. Um, I know for the fact that in the helpers, we have got colors. And in utility, we have got backgrounds and borders. So I just want to play around with this for a while. So I want, I want to see if I can give some background to this div. And in the documentation, they are saying that this is how you can apply, this is how you can apply background. Okay. So I'm going to go back to background color. I'm going to copy, um, maybe this one, BG light. So I'm going to go and copy this. Come back here and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to copy this as well. I'm going to say hello world here. Now, if I go back to my test HTML refresh, now you see that we have got a div which have got a light background, and this looks pretty nice. Um, I can go here and I can also say, for example, dark, save, come back and refresh, and now this the div becomes dark, and I can have a text as light. Refresh. So this is how you can do styling. There's much more. That we can that we're gonna learn about bootstrap but this is the starting point that i wanted to show you there's one more thing that i want to highlight is if i click on this device toolbar you see that how nicely everything wraps up on a smaller device so you see that the way the moment i start scrolling through the through the window size the text size and and the dimension and the floating and every styling adjust itself accordingly Kind of nice, right? Now let's look at one of the components that I wanted to emphasize. And that would be, if I go to components here, and maybe I will go for a card. This card looks good, so I'm going to copy everything. I'm going to put it in the container so that it's also responsive. Save it. Refresh. Now you see that we have a card inside a container um, just to distinguish i'm going to say bg um, maybe light so that we have a background for this container here you go right i hope you're able to see some difference now if i go here and i ch start changing the screen size you should notice how card is able to uh, readjust its height with and that's the beauty of using bootstrap beautiful
I like it. Um, from here, we're going to stop using Bootstrap as a standalone. And next, we're going to talk about how to use Bootstrap on a Next.js or a React project. So I'm going to see you there. All right, moving on to the next chapter and where we will learn how to use Bootstrap with Next.js or React framework, or you can extend this to any framework you like. Before that, I just want to give you a quick reminder. This is the methodology we're going to follow. So now before jumping into the coding and understanding how Bootstrap is designed, let's go and look at a couple of um, websites that, you know, uses Bootstrap and try and understand their layout and how things are, how, how they design their app, right? So I have opened YouTube in, in incognito mode and I'm surprised to see what people are watching in Canada. Anyway, so if you look at YouTube, um, it has a header section on top. And then there is subheader where you can do filtering. And then on the left side, we have a menu bar, a vertical menu. And on in, in the midsection, we have all the content that YouTube want us to see. Okay. I've also opened LinkedIn. And if you go to LinkedIn, you would notice that LinkedIn also has a header or a menu bar. However, the difference between YouTube's menu and LinkedIn's menu is that YouTube's menu is static, so if you scroll down the page, the menu or the layout does not change. It stays where it is. However, on LinkedIn, uh, the menu goes scroll with the scroller. LinkedIn is designed a little bit differently compared to YouTube, of course. So you see that we have a header, and then we have a section where you can technically log in, and then we have an image which kind of depicts what LinkedIn is. Then we have another section, then we have next section, Another section, so they have designed, they have they have divided their website into different sections, which is okay. And then at the end we have a footer. I've also opened Airbnb, and you should notice that Airbnb also has a header. And then they have sub sub filters. If you scroll down, you will see that the header stays or it becomes static on the top, and then the content starts scrolling. We also have a small menu bar which opens something like this, and we've got a couple of filters. Beautiful. So here are the topics that I noted from YouTube. It has a header which is static. They have a left menu. They have a top right sign in button and content in between. Airbnb is almost like YouTube. They've got a header, they've got a search bar, they've got a menu, and they have uh, main content. And I've also marked down that their content looks like um, they have this they, they have these cards available, different cards, right, that we just saw a moment ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we've got LinkedIn and LinkedIn got header, which is not static, something different. And then they've got a few banners and pages and then they have footer. With that understanding, I would like to go back to Bootstrap and can we use Bootstrap to do all this? So I'm at the Bootstrap homepage. I'm going to go to components. And if I open my notepad again, the one thing that is common for everything that they have a header, sometimes static, sometimes not. And the header is also called a navigation bar or, or as they call it, nav bar. So if I go back to Bootstrap and we look for components that are provided by Bootstrap to us, I see there's something called navs and tabs. So this provides us kind of navigation styling, okay, which is good. They've got different tabs. Hmm. This is not we're in, something which we are not interested in. Let's look at nav bar. Hmm. Now this is something that I might be interested in. Looks quite quite reasonable and quite relatable to what we have, for example, here. Right, we have a nav bar, we have options, YouTube, sign in, and things like that. Okay, so we can provide that. Custom we can customize this nav bar basically. Hmm. Okay. There there are a few other styles. I can put image with tag with text. So you can scroll through the pages. I've done this before, so I'm gonna go back to responsive behavior. And I'm interested in this kind of nav bar 
what this does is so if I press Control Shift I and if I go to responsive behavior and I start scrolling the window, you see that this navbar collapses into a nice looking um, button. And if you remember, that's what YouTube is also doing. So this is something which we would like to have. So that's one component that I think would be useful for us. Beautiful. The other things all these websites have is a left menu, sign in button, and then they have content. So let's see what else we have here. We also have buttons. So I think we can use buttons to create sign in and login buttons, which is good. We have looped through the cards. So I think we can use cards to display different things. They also have carousels which basically works something like this so if you have a moving content and you would like it to slide through that is something which we can use and there are a bunch of other things that we're gonna have a look and now let's set up our our project so i've created a folder and inside i've opened that folder what i would like to do is i would like to click on this address bar and type cmd and press enter this should open a command window for me and I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to say Next.js installation with TypeScript and I'm going to copy this command. If you're not sure what this command is, I have created another video which you should watch. Um, I recommend that because that will give you an understanding what this code and project setup is doing. I press enter and now it's going to ask me about a couple of details. So I'm going to quickly give that and I'm going to come back once everything is updated. Lovely. So everything has been downloaded. I'm going to close this window and I'm going to open my project in Visual Studio Code. Again, um, if, you're, if you're not sure how to do this, please go and watch the video that we created in this playlist. So here is my Visual Studio Code. I'm going to click on File, click on Open Folder. Here's the folder where I, where I created the next project. Make sure you select this folder. You don't have to go inside this folder. You just select this folder and click on select folder. Wow, that's a lot of select folder in one statement. Beautiful. So your Visual Studio should look something like this. Click on terminal, click on new terminal. And here we're going to write a command to start a, to spin up a server. So I'm going to say npm run dev. That I'm gonna to go to my browser and open a new tab and I'm gonna say localhost 3000 press enter. And if you did everything correctly, you should see a page which looks something like this. If you see this, you have done everything the way it should be. So a pat on the back. And from here, we're gonna start our bootstrap journey with Next.js. First thing that I normally like to do, I go to pages, I select this index and I delete this. Um, you can you can clear the content manually which is fine but i just like to delete it myself and now i'm going to go to pages i'm going to create this file again index.tsx and i'll say const index page equals to return what do i want to return i want to say in h1 i want to say hello world And as always, we always export this component so that Next is able to find this component and render it for us. Beautiful. You might have noticed that when I click on Control S, so when I saved this file, my code got restructured. It become much more pretty, and that's because I'm using an extension called Prettier. And if you don't have it, you need to click on this extensions, search for Prettier, P R E W T I E R. And the extension should look something like this. Again, we have created a video for that in the basics playlist. If uh, I would recommend that you go and check that out. Beautiful. So with that, going back to my index page, I'm going to refresh the page. And we got the hello world. Lovely. And from, he from here, we would really like to, you know, um, go and create our own website, our own responsive apps using Bootstrap. And for that, I have identified a really nice app that I use. It's called Speech with AI. It's using Bootstrap because I created this. 
and then you can see we have clear segmentation in terms of um, banners images sections and you know all these fancy stuff that should be there if i press ctrl shift i and open my console and i start changing the width you see that how the content aligns itself into into much more readable format beautiful and i think uh, to learn bootstrap i'm gonna replicate this website in front of you and you're gonna you're gonna love it you're gonna love the journey perfect and um, now moving forward and trying to replicate this website there's one thing that i would like to do is open my favorite tool of all time and that would be wait for the drum roll <laughs> Uh, that's MS Paint. I know, I know. And some people don't like it, but I kind of love it. Love it because it's a really good scratch pad to, you know, conceptualize, conceptualize different topics into really um, meaningful and, you know, understandable chunks. So if you go back to YouTube, you'll see that this is what we were looking at. This is what we referenced a moment ago. And what I want you to pay attention to is the way the website is structured. And I'm going to draw a parallel of YouTube in my MS Paint. So this is YouTube, right? On top, we have got something like this. And inside, we have got YouTube. And we have got a search bar. Then we have got a button, then we have got a mic, then we have got sign in, right? And then here we have another box for all the menu items. Here we have got another section where we have all these filters. Then we have this big section. Inside that big section, we have a lot of smaller sections like that. It's not like 100% accurate representation, but you get the gist. <clears throat> now with this, if you compare YouTube with this, or for example, if you go to LinkedIn, if you try and compare this with LinkedIn, it's pretty much the same. Here is the LinkedIn. And we've got the header. And we've got a section. And in that section, we have got the login section. And then we have got an image. Then we've got another section which says explore. Then we've got another section to find the right job and so on. The reason I'm doing this video is to give you an understanding that this is a very simple geometry. So if you look at this, this outer section is a box. And I am gonna fill this box with a color, let's say light blue. Okay. Then we've got another box which is this. Then we got another box, which is this. Then we got another box, which is this. Then we got another box, which is this. And then we got many other boxes, which looks like this. And with this, you should understand that the core concept of using Bootstrap is to designing everything into different grids, into different rows, and into different columns. For example, what I want to emphasize is if you look at, if you look at this. I'm gonna take another color. This is a is one row, and inside that row we have one column. This is one row, and this whole thing is also certainly I'm pretty sure is also another row. So we got a big row inside that we have got a smaller row, and in that row we got three columns. Then we have a new row, and in that row we have three columns, and so on. And that's all it is. It's rows and columns. That's all it is. And with that understanding, with that super fundamental understanding, let's go and look at the bootstrap that if bootstrap can help us with rows and columns. And fortunately, bootstrap does provides us containers. So if you read through, I highly recommend that you go and read through it if you have time. <clears throat> However, in this tutorial, I'm gonna give you all the understanding that you need to have in order to you know build any responsive app that you like so bootstrap technically comes with technically comes with lot of classes 
So the one class that you see here is container. What this means is we're gonna we're gonna see this in super practical way. I'm gonna copy this. I come to my index page. I'm gonna say div. And just so you know that class is the keyword in JavaScript. Therefore, we say class name. And here I'm gonna say hello world. And just to distinguish this from other elements, I'm gonna say bg warning. I'm gonna come to this class in a while, but just understand that this class gives a background of warning color to this uh, div. Okay. If we come back here, if I refresh the page, this does not work because, of course, we did not include Bootstrap into our into our project, and we started using Bootstrap. So let's do that first. And All right. So let's fix the blunder we made, or that I made in the last video. So. I'm gonna go back to Bootstrap. I'm gonna click on Get Started. I'm gonna go to Download. And here we have different ways of using Bootstrap in a project. We have seen this version, the standalone version. Now we're gonna look at the npm version. So in to install Bootstrap in our project, all we need to do is we have to run this command in our project. So I'm gonna copy that, come back to Visual Studio, stop the running server, paste it. And I'm going to say minus minus save so that this dependency is saved in my package.json. Beautiful. So that is done and dusted. So now let's see how we can include Bootstrap in our project. So there are multiple ways of including Bootstrap in our project, but the right way of doing it is including the CSS styling in the app component. So import bootstrap slash distribution slash css slash bootstrap dot css like that save it if you're not sure why we are importing bootstrap in the app component um, in a nutshell that's because my app is the root app that gets initialized or gets mounted on the web app when next.js project is started again <clears throat> if you're not if you want to go into the details Check the video that we created in the basics playlist. And we're gonna move on with this, this import. So since we have imported bootstrap here, I'm gonna run my server. And there you go, got hello world in a container. And that container is yellow in color. Beautiful. So now go back to bootstrap. And we were in layout and container. Another class which is quite useful in my experience is container, of course, but container fluid. And here I'm going to say success. Now you see the difference. Now, if you go back and try and draw in parallel what LinkedIn has done, if you see here, the LinkedIn's menu starts from a point and ends at a point. Seems like they are using container. And YouTube seems like they are using container fluid. So something to keep in mind. Anyway, I'm going to close this because we're going to focus on speech AI and we're going to try and replicate speech AI. And hopefully we're going to pick a lot of things about Bootstrap. And we're going to learn a lot of things about Bootstrap. Lovely. Before that, I just want to give you a quick reminder. This is the methodology we're going to follow. So with that, and let me close this. With that, we're gonna step into our very first header. So if you look at the header that our speech AI has, so let's see if we can find that in Bootstrap somewhere. So we know in components we can go to nav bars and we want the responsive behavior, of course. And we want this one. So let's just no, we want this one with the brand name shown to the left and toggler on the right. So let's copy this. We're gonna create a new folder called components. And inside this, I'm gonna call it navbar.tsx, like that. And here, we'll create a component, navbar. We're gonna return. And we always export 
search for it. default navbar like that now react is complaining that they don't know what class is so we will say class equals to class name place everything for input it's saying that it has no corresponding closing tag so let's give it a closing tag for tab index we need to put it this way like that and that's it so now if i save everything should get pretty thanks to our prettier extension now what we need to do is or uh, we need to go to index page i'm going to remove all of this and i'm going to just include nav bar component in my index page and that needs to be imported like this in general visual studio will do it automatically for you but if it does not do it either you have not exported your component like this or um, you just need to do it manually it's not able to find it nevertheless now if i go back and i refresh uh, you might see that the page looks little bit overfetched that's because i have zoomed in so that you can have a better view but that's how it is right so 150% now we want to customize this nav bar so how do we do that we go to nav bar and we're going to start looking into the i'm going to remove these tags so that we have more space so i'm going to look into a couple of classes that are being used here so it's saying navbar and it's saying navbar expand lg fine it says navbar light and background as light these guys are using a different color i think i'm not going to go into the color combination so i'm going to just keep it uh, keep it dark or light so i'm going to say my nav my navbar should be of dark color and background should also be dark if i save it i've got a dark background nice <clears throat> if i press control shift i and if i go to mobile mode you will see that everything everything works perfectly there's one thing that you might have noticed that when i click on this button the menu bar doesn't appear and that is because we have missed one thing so if you go back to get started and go to download and if you remember bootstrap provides us two things one is css for styling which we have got so everything is styled bootstrap also provides um a, a javascript file for all these you know functionalities of clicking a button and how do we enable that well we need to include that just like we included our css and the correct way and the right way of importing bootstrap javascript is not like this the reason uh, you're not supposed to import bootstrap like this i mean it's going to it's going to work so if i go back and click here now it's working however few of the components in the in bootstrap needs or requires a window object that is provided by the browser we therefore we need to wait until this component is mounted and has been initialized 100% and to wait until then we use the hook called use effect and this use effect hook needs to be imported from react like this and again if you're not familiar with use effect i would recommend that you go back to the basics playlist and have a go on how use effect works with that in place i'm going to close this and this should work the way it was beautiful now let's go and customize a couple of things here um for our purpose we don't need a search bar for sure so coming back here i'm going to go and look for the search bar which is this one so i don't need that i'm going to remove that nice we also need home link and disabled so let's remove that as well we don't need disabled we don't need home and you know what we're going to keep the home and we're going to remove everything else like that and for navbar home we can use a branding so let's say let's say we say speech ai like that and i'm just going to remove this as well because we don't need it that we got speech ai and at the moment this is a reference how um, i know this is a bootstrap class therefore i'm not going to change this but 
what we should be doing, we should be doing something like this. This is the best practice of this is the best practice of using next. What we have done is we have wrapped, we have created a button which are with the text of switch AI and we have wrapped that with a link component provided by next needs to be imported like this. And of course, we need to give it a class. So let's do that. We will say button. Now it's a button. And if you click on it, it should take you to the home page. Okay, perfect. Um, we are, if you go back again to the speech AI, so they've got branding and then they've got get started button. So let's try and put that. Technically, we don't need this button because this is the button that gets enabled, you know, when you see this toggler. So we're going to remove this as well because we don't need it. And here we're going to create another button. Type will be pause button and we will say login and this should have a class name of button and button dark like that but there are a couple of things that are missing right now and let's have a look so this button is okay but i just can't see it i can't distinguish this as a button whereas these guys can because obviously they have a different background but for me, it's not looking so awesome. So let's go to Bootstrap and see what can we do with buttons. So going to components, going to buttons. Hmm. So we've got different types of colors. Right now we are using the dark button, but apparently we can use primary, secondary, and so many. How about I try a light one? Designing, designing an app is also a lot of testing. So I think this looks good. And don't worry if this looks a little bigger because I'm zoomed in. So if you reset, this should go back to the normal. Um, what else can we do with button? Let's have a look. I can have also have a button which looks something like this. This also looks quite interesting. Maybe instead of light button, I can use maybe I can use this one. Save. No, this doesn't work here because of the background. This is okay. We've got size, we've got large button. So if you add a class, something like this, the button will become bigger. You see? However, what I'm interested in, I'm interested in a small button. I'm going to use something like this. Nice. Again, if I reset everything, this should become a smaller button. And this looks good. With that, I'm happy. But as always, I tend to give a lot of bonus during my tutorials, so let's go for a bonus. If you scroll up for the bootstrap, you will find icons. If you click on icons, there's a there's a lot of icons that you can use in bootstrap. And how do we use it? Super simple, copy this. Go back to terminal. I'm gonna start a new terminal. Paste it and I'll say save. The reason I opened a new terminal is because I did not want to uh, kill my server. So I'm going to wait for it. Once everything is downloaded and, and installed, I'm going to close this. And the way we include bootstrap CSS, we also need to include bootstrap icons like this. Save it. Process. Now we've got a lot of options. So, for example, if I look for login, we've got this box arrow in right. Click on this, and on the right, you can actually copy everything that you have here. And they have given some examples. For example, you can use these icons in a heading, inside a button, without button without text, in an input group, and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to go back inside the login button. I'm going to copy paste this. Cut everything. Paste it here. And as you know, it should be class name. So I'm going to replace it, save it. Now going back to our app. 
Mm. Nice. And I've got really nice looking button with with icons. Beautiful. I think with that our <clears throat> our nav bar is ready. And I kind of like it. Now look back to speech AI and what they have done next. They've got a banner section. So this, you know, sections like this normally are called banners. And what I can see is they have two things. On the left, they have some text. And on the right, they've got this image. Hmm. Let's see if we can find something like that on Bootstrap. So if we go here and we start scrolling through the components provided by Bootstrap. Um, let's have a look. If you go for collapse, and that's not the one. I know I have seen this somewhere. I think if we go to example, and if I go to or maybe in carousel, there it is. There you go. So, in order to use this, we probably need to build this ourselves. And I'm gonna <coughs> do what most of the artists do, I'm gonna steal it. So, right click and go to view page source. I'm going to find this, where this section is, and there it is. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy everything. I just want to read through it, so let's copy this, two of these. Come back and create a new component, and we're going to call it main banner. Dot tsx const in banner run paste everything with always say export default main banner now let's do a couple of cleaning class should be class name good and this needs to have an ending that also needs to have an ending. And then we save it, and then everything should align the way it should. Beautiful. Now, let's go to index, and we're gonna call this component. So I'm gonna say main banner, like that. And it should be imported like this. If it's not automatically imported, you need to import it like this. Going back to our page, okay. This looks good, but there are a few things that we need to tweak. I mean, overall, we got pretty good, pretty good deal, right? Copying from there. So let's see what we can do in order to fix this. Now, honestly speaking, to fix this, we need a couple of things. We, we can see that this is way too on the left and way too much on the right. And same goes for this section. And to, to learn that, let's go and see what Bootstrap has to offer in terms of margins and paddings and you know in general cleaning things to do that i'm going to go to google i'm going to say bootstrap margin like that i'm going to open this and yeah take me to the latest version so it seems like spacing is designed inside the utilities so i'm going to close this i'm going to go back to latest bootstrap i'm going to go to utilities and we're going to go to spacing and says margin and padding so what they're saying is we can set margin to any class or any row or any column by saying by using the class m and then if we want to select a side like for if we want to have a margin from top or padding from top we have to say t this is from bottom this is from start this is from end and this for the horizontal one and this is for the for the vertical ones and this is how we decide how much margin do we want. So with one, two, three, and four. So for example, you can technically go and say P2, which means for this div, I want a padding of two. So let's see if that works for us. I'm gonna copy that. Um, one more thing before we jump into that. As you can see, this is one thing is actually a row and for this row we want that everything that's inside this row should have some sort of padding all right so let's go and do that we're gonna say padding of two and save it 
now it looks a little bit better so it, now it's not going all the way to the end it's not sticking to the top and it's also better from the right side hmm. maybe if i increase this go to five i like it better when i have a padding of five and maybe we can do the same for this one so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna say for this row i want a padding of five there you go now this looks much nicer and as you know that you can put your details here and if we go back to speech ai these guys are using using a text and an image so we can do the same we can go to our code and this is the row that we don't want. So I'm gonna delete this, save it. Oops, I'm sorry. This is the row that we don't want. And there you go. Beautiful. <clears throat> Moving on to the next section of speech AI. So we have already implemented this banner section. Now let's see how we can build another banner that looks like this. There are a couple of things that I think we should look for. So when I look at this section, I see that they have got they've got a file button to choose a file. There seems like an icon here, and same goes for this one. Went, and then we have a button. Hmm. There seems like we have a section which looks like a div, but it also has some sort of shadow at the end, and seems like it also has a border. All right, um, let's see if we can find these things on our on bootstrap and how we can create this using bootstrap So there are multiple ways to basically look for these things for example You can use the search button here. I find it useful sometimes but not as useful as it should be So let's see and figure out if we can find something like shadow. There it is. Okay So Here's the div that has no shadow. This has a small shadow, regular one, and a large one. And here are the code to basically create shadows. So if you look, it's a simple div, and it's the class is shadow lg. Um, that's it. Okay, that sounds comforting. Let's move to our VS Code and create a component. We'll call it load file dot tsx. And as always, we're gonna create a component. I am from upload file. And what do we do? We always export it. Beautiful. In the index page, we would like to import this. So let's import upload file. Should be uploaded like this lovely going back to our our app at localhost we see that we have got this so let's create let's create a div that will look something like this it has a heading it also have it also have another heading so let's try and create those so if you remember from our beautiful image everything that you see on the screen is either a row and a column within it or some some combination of that so this is what we will try to create here when we want to replicate this section so i i'm going to say this whole thing the white background is a row and the and the and the background here should be a column because we only have one row and one column so let's try and do that so we'll say div row and then we're going to say div class name as column i'll say i am from column okay nothing has changed because visually it, it does not change much and now i would like to go and take a deeper dive in how rows and columns are designed in bootstrap so i'll go to layout i'll go to grids and this is how it works in a in a row and a column way so you create a div with row and within the row you can create multiple columns let me try that copy this and I know this for a fact, so I'm going to write it here. All with equal 
করবে in a given row let's do one more thing so that it's much more visible we're going to give a background of let's say red to this row so that we know okay we have one row and within that row we have three different columns and all of them all of them should be of same width because that's how bootstrap divides the available area between different columns okay i'm going to do a couple of things just for the aesthetics point of view so that it's easier for you to see on the screen So that's how bootstrap divides different column and how do we know that these columns are of same width and that should be simple let's give a background to each div we're gonna say warning so it should be yellow primary this should be blue and info this should be in this should be of teal color we see that we have different columns with diff equal widths if you are not sure right now that how this col how did I go for these colors um <clears throat> you can find these in utilities and in backgrounds and they have this they have told which class represents which color okay coming back to layout and grades so that's how columns look but there's one thing that is missing here that we have no idea how how big the row is and that is because the column is basically overlapping the row so what we can do one more thing that we learned we can apply a padding and we want padding from the top maybe three with what this will do this will make sure that all the columns start after a padding of three in the row similarly you can say padding from bottom and let's say that is one so you'll see that we got some padding from the bottom and that padding is actually equals to like one and from top is three again <clears throat> you guessed it padding from start i could i could say two and i could say padding from end i could say five like that um need to check why we don't have a padding from the starting so going back to bootstrap and this should be in utilities and spacing padding from start that is padding in the left and we could use one two three one two three we want to say padding from the top is three which you can see here padding from bottom is one padding from the starting is three and from the ending we can have i don't know maybe five now you see that we got padding from all the sides of different amount if you want you can combine padding in y direction with saying padding in y and that should be five now we have got five padding from top and bottom similarly you can say padding in x direction should be i don't know four and then you've got four padding from left and from the right okay so that's first thing to understand second thing that i would like to emphasize is that bootstrap provides 12 columns in one row what that means is conceptually this column i could say take a width of one and i could say take a width of three then take a width of eight eight plus three eleven plus one twelve if i save it now you will see that the columns have changed their width so the first column is of width one second column is of width um, three and the last one is with eight which also means that if you don't define a width here, the remaining width will be provided to this column. Okay, beautiful. With this, you should now be able to understand that you should be able to create any geometry you like. So I can say div class name another row inside this. And I can say div class name column. Let's say column width is six. I am column one and I can copy this. I can paste it again and I can say I'm column two now um let's give it a let's give it some for this column i'm gonna say margin i'm gonna say margin from x should be two and this one again margin from x should be two and i'm gonna reduce the size of the column so that it's able to adjust itself in one row last but not least i also want to give some border these classes can be easily found on the bootstrap 
give it another color so we'll say bg secondary <clears throat> so now you see we have one row which is of red color then we have three columns yellow blue and teal and inside the third inside the third column we have another row which has two columns and obviously you can expand this to any level that you like you can have multiple columns within this because we have misspelled this class therefore we were not seeing any border but here you go and now if going back to our awesome example from ms paint now you should be able to draw a parallel with rows and columns so for example on the youtube the left section was a row and this row was a big one and then we have another row here in the middle we have one row and within that row we have multiple rows and within each row we have different columns so as long as you understand this concept you should be able to design any website that you like beautiful okay moving on of speech ai and then we see that okay we've got one row with no background so background is white and within that one row we have one column and within that column we have a couple of items if you're not sure what this is you can press ctrl shift i click on this um, element icon and then you click on any item that you like and this will show you the this will show you the html code of that section so you see that this is a row and within that row we have a column and inside a column we have an h5 tag a p tag and another div and that div has a couple of items inside that that's another way of you know understanding things stealing things copying things all right so let's do that for our our project as well so what i want is i want want one row I don't want it to be danger in color. I want padding from all the side and I want padding to be five. And I want another div. I want to call it as a column. And inside, okay. Now going back to bootstrap, I also want some components. So for example, these guys are having um, a select button, a file choose button. And those are the things we can find under form. Or you can also go and uh, search here, for example, um, select. And that will take you basically here. And now Bootstrap gives us, gives us a couple of options to you know design our, our elements. You can have different sizes, different types. This is, but we are not interested in this one because that's not how speech AI looks. Speech AI seems to have an icon and then they have a then they have a HTML bar control. So let's have a look how we can find that. Got radios and checks. Okay. Fair enough. And I like this one. So if you want to use this sometime, you can go for it. Input groups. That's it. This is what we need basically, right? This is what it it, it looks like these guys are using. So let's try and use that. So I'm going to copy this and I'll just paste it here just so, just so I can see how this looks. Control H class should be equal to class name and input text should have an ending. Going back to our local host, this looks, this looks good. First thing that we need is we need a select button. So let's copy that. I'm gonna paste it here and just want to verify the class name. So this should be form control. I think this should be okay. Let's have a look. Okay, yeah, that's what we need. Now instead of this icon, uh, we want to have a different icon and we already know how to do that. So we will go to bootstrap. We'll open icons and within the icons, we're going to look for share. I like share fill. Copy that and paste it. There you go. Beautiful. Perfect. And with that, we are able to get a nice looking Dropbox. Um, in our case, so if you look here, this one is a bit more 
centered and smaller compared to what we have. And we can also achieve that by saying, I want this column width to be equals to seven, for example. I don't want it to be super big. So now you see that this column, let's give it a background. This column is only a seven width wider. It's not going all the way until here. And there's one more thing missing, which is this is not center aligned. No problem. Put step five. Enter div. And they've given some examples how to manipulate the directions. And we are not interested in these. There you go. We are interested in this third one. So I'm going to copy this class. And I'm going to paste it in the row section. So understand what this is saying. This is saying that within this row, center everything. So this becomes a child. This column becomes a child for this row. And then this child will be center aligned. So let's have a look. Beautiful. I like it. Um, I also like to give some padding within this, <clears throat> within this column so that we have some space. This is looking nice. Now let's go back to bootstrap. Let's look for border. And border is just simple class saying border. So we can copy that. And we should be able to paste it in the column. And we also learned that we can give it a shadow like this. Lovely. Let's remove the danger. So now we got the shadow. We got nice looking div. <coughs> Beautiful. Let's have a look what else these guys are doing. So they have some text here. We can also put some text. So how do we do that? Within this div, I want to say H5. And I'm going to copy everything. It here. Nice. Um, so theirs looks better than ours. And that's because they are on a normal zoom level. And we are on 200%. Good. Um, we would like this to be centered as well. And we can again go to Bootstrap and search for font. Let's say this five here. Font center. Open this. Now they have given a couple of classes that we can work around. And these classes could be found under utilities and text. And they are saying if you use this class, your text will be centered. Uh, and how do we want that? We could give it to could give it to H5, and then everything becomes centered. But I wanted to give this to the column itself because we're gonna put more text within the columns like this and this, and I want everything to be centered. Okay, nice. Ours looks a little bit bold. I don't want it to be bold because these guys don't have it as bold. Again, going back to Bootstrap, within the text, I think we should be able to find it. So I'm just going to scroll a little bit. They have a lot, uh, lot of classes here. Font size, font weight, and italic. There you go. And I want font to be normal. I don't want, to be, want it to be bold. So I'll just say, maybe, maybe I'll give it a class here. I want, and I want font weight to be normal good this is good next thing i see that they have got some sort of yellow thing so let's copy this and we're going to create a paragraph i'm going to paste this save it Cut this and it's not yellow as of now hmm. let's see if bootstrap has something for us or we can do a custom color Mm, okay. If I remember from when we were inspecting this element, I did find a class. So let's try and do that again. There it is. They are using mark. So I think we can also do that. We can wrap everything within mark. This should give us nice yellow looking feel. There you go. 
what else are they doing they have another text and they are saying upload now and listen to a book so let's create another heading i'm going to say h3 i'm going to give it a class name of font weight normal paste it we know that this is an icon so let's find an icon for ourselves coming back to icon and we need sound sound wave that's what we need copy and paste it here bit of a space so that it's all distinguishable okay looking good and we can give it a color how do we give give color to anything well we know in bootstrap that we have classes for colors so if i go to utility go to ba sorry background i know that these are the colors but these are the colors for the background and i'm pretty sure there should be colors for text as well if not here we can google it but i know that so i can just type it here and you can trust me that this is how it works so you can say text yes and this will make sure that everything becomes as a success color class lovely um i think there's one more thing left so if we go here and see they've got this um they've got this another html element which is which is basically input type and type is file so we're going to copy this paste it and now we need There you go. So if I reset the zoom, this is how it looks, and I kind of like it. Click on it, select a file if you want. Last thing we need, uh, um, we need a button here, and we are a master of that. We already know how to do that. So let's do that within the column. So we'll say button type, of course, is button, and we'll say listen now and this should have some classes so it should be a button class of course and we need a button to be dark save it and there you go and of course we need an icon so i'm gonna copy this is this the icon no this where's the icon there it is we copy this and paste it in the button cut it put here save it lovely and that's how it is um they're using a different icon but it's okay we can use the same icon and that's how you design your upload section beautiful all right guys so we have implemented the upload feature now let's go and look for the next section that speech ai has and that seems to be check out the reasons I think I'm not going to implement this because if you go up, you see that the checkout section is actually almost equivalent to the to the banner section. It's just that you need to uh, switch the image and text to the left and right depending upon the row count. So I'm pretty sure you should you will be able to do it yourself. And now I want to jump on check out what they are saying to the testimonial section. And this seems interesting because this have a couple of things that we would like to use. And again, this definitely is one row. So if you go back to our awesome image, this is one row. And within one row, we have three different cards. And now if we go to Bootstrap, search for cards. We have seen this before. So therefore, I'm just looking for the cards directly. Most certainly, we have used the same thing, so I think I'm just going to use this. And but before using that, which we should also notice that they have three different cards. And if I remember correctly, there's something called card groups. 
what card group does is it groups certain number of cards in one column and depending upon depending depending upon the screen size they they rearrange themselves like this and i think this is the one i would like to use so i'm going to copy this go back to vs code go to components create new file we'll call it testimonials .tsx Cons, testimonials return thing and then what do we do religiously we always export default the component like that now let's change let's replace the class with class name of course image should have an ending tag so let's do that lovely last but not least go to index page and we're gonna import this component like this you need to import it like this and i'm gonna put a couple of you know big statements so that we have a better view nice going back to testimonials couple of things that you might notice that this section is equivalent to this section so we have different columns and all of them are technically identical so what we can do is we can say const and say const testimonials and that will be a list in this list we will have a dictionary the first thing we will have will be card title we will call it title one. Second thing we need is card description. We will say card description. And of course, we need an image. So we will say card image as img1. We have not imported this yet. We're going to do that in a moment. What I have done also is I've created a folder called images and inside that there's a folder called testimonial and within that folder we've got four different images. So what I would do, I would import all of those. So I'll say import img1 from one folder up inside images testimonials 1.jpg like that. I'm going to duplicate that. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Fine. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to duplicate this four times. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that this is a hard coded list. Agreed. However, in the real life, you might fetch this from a database. So, it won't be as as big a list as you see here this might be a few lines of code beautiful we got a row and within that row um we got a couple of columns so let's try and do this dynamically and we will say we will write a jsx and we will say testimonials dot map okay so what we have done we are saying hey i have a list why don't you map this function on each of that item in the list okay this is an anonymous function if you're not sure how this works check out our basics playlist which you will get all the details the map function will get one item at a time so we'll say testimonial and it will also get an index of that item and here we want to say return what do we want to return we want to return a column so we'll copy this paste it here Probably we don't need this because we're only returning one item. Lovely. And now what we can do, we can go here and we can delete. We can delete all the columns like that. What do we have right now? We have a row 
and then we are dynamically creating columns within that row okay beautiful now we have an image and we need to change the source and we can say for this object there should be an image the card image and we created just just a moment ago like this and within that card image there should be a source like this good for a given testimonial there should be a title and for a given testimonial there should be a description like that again a quick recap we created a list and each in the list we have a dictionary each dictionary have identical items title description and image and in general this will be this you will receive via some database okay save it go back to your local host and you should see you should see something like this title 1 title 2 title 3 and title 4 i like it and if i change the width this should become responsive okay lovely i would like to do some padding from the right from the top and maybe reduce the size so let's see how we can do that here i could say padding all around should be five now we got some padding nice now as you can see these guys have three cards in a row um let's see if we can also do the same so i'm gonna go to bootstrap and if you scroll down you'll figure out that if we change this class we should have fourth we should have fourth card wrapped up in the row so what we can do is i can i can copy this go back here and i could say something like this what we are saying is in general we only want one column however when whenever we are on a bigger screen screen bigger than medium size we would like to have three items in a row so let's see if that works nice and this this works pretty nice for for us what we can do is we can go here and we can remove the fourth one so that it matches with what we have on the speech ai now they have a different background color and to differentiate that we can also give it a color we can say bg um, secondary for example and we got a nice looking background here nice um i think i'm going to do alternate so if this is white this should be gray and this should be white so let's follow that i'm going to cut this save it go back to upload and i will give this row a background of gray like this hmm. you see that some of the features are not looking so good now so maybe we can go here and just remove the remove the success okay there's one more thing on bootstrap that we can do is we can set some transparency so if we go down look for utilities go for background it looks like we are on an older version of bootstrap i'm gonna go to 5.2 and in the 5.2 in the background there's a class called opacity so i could copy this and paste it here now the background should have the opacity of 10 percent. i think now it looks better compared to what we had before and that's how you can play around with it okay lovely now let's see what do what do they have as a second section they've got uh, reading superpowers again this is nothing different than what you have already seen here or maybe in, in this section so all you need to do you need to run a loop and <clears throat> create one row with two columns left right another row right left another row left right and similarly i would i would argue that the pricing section is looks the same and what i would like to do is i would like to create a footer now so that you know we can close this tutorial on a, on a high note and with a happy feeling so let's try and do this
Um, I'm going to go to components. Probably I'll close all of this. I'll go back to component. I'll create a new component called footer.tsx. I'll say const const footer equals to turn. Now we are a pro of it, so we'll say div. Last name, of course, has to be row. We need some padding from all around. For time being, we'll give it mbg secondary. Oh, you know what? Dark. Like this. Save it and never ever forget to export. So default. Save it. Index page. After testimonial, we're gonna say footer. And that's how you import it. Like this. Going back to our app, we should have a nice looking footer. I like it. Um now we can remove these breakpoints because we don't need it anymore. And that's how our that's how our footer looks. Lovely. So inside the footer, it seems like they have a row which has a border. Then they I'm pretty sure these are three columns. And this is another row. So even if you are not sure, I'm 100% sure that you can do this on your own. So let's try and do this. We want to have one column. We'll say div, last name column, give it a border like this. So we've got a column, which is obviously of zero height, but we have got a column here. And again, going back to our awesome image, you should now understand that we have, have we can have one row. Within that row, we can have one column, and within that column, we can have another row. That's what we're gonna do. Here, we're gonna say div class name as a row, and we'll say div class name as column. And we're gonna copy this, and here we're gonna say e address address is Toronto. And we will say everything inside this should have a text that should be of light color, like this. Copy, paste, and paste. Phone should be plus one six four seven eight three two da da da. Of course, I'm not giving my real phone number. Paste at the rate gmail dot com maybe or whatever. Save it and come back. Lovely. I've got this. What we could also do, we could say, I want padding from y directions to be four. So we have some space in this in this row. Nice. So let's copy this and paste it again. Now we only need one column, and we're gonna say. All rights reserved. Like that. And there you go. And this is how you basically create responsive, beautiful websites using Bootstrap. And you can add as many sections as you, as you like. I'm going to reset the zoom so that we can see how it looks on a 100% zoom. Right? Of course, uh, these guys have used the icons, so and you already know how to do that. You can just go to Bootstrap, go for icons, and look for different icons. For example, location, view all fill. Simply copy this, come back here, and you can say, I don't know. Like that. So you can do that. You can customize it as much as you like. I can switch to mobile mode and you would see that everything becomes super responsive. This section does not look good and let's see how we can fix that. Cars are looking nice, footer is looking really good and this section is also not looking good because the phone number and email is getting congested. First fix the footer and once we fix the footer, you would also understand how to fix this section. So what's happening is, on a smaller screen, this is still taking a column width of 4 because we have 3 columns and 12 divided by 3 is 4. 
However, what we would like to do is whenever we are we are on a smaller screen, we would like this to take the whole column. And once we are on a large screen, this should shrink back to you know smaller columns. Um, let's see how we can do that. So going back to Bootstrap, maybe Google how to switch to one hundred percent column width. Blue ID TH on mobile using Bootstrap. If you go to grid section, grid systems. So it tells us that, let's see. There it is. So it, it tells us that whenever we put column minus something, at that breakpoint, the container will change it, change its class. Interesting. Okay. So let's see how we can do that. There you go. So you're saying that using a single set of column SM class, you can create a basic grid system that stacks out stacked and become horizontal on a small breakpoint. So if I if I go here, before that, I just want to give you a quick reminder. This is the methodology we're gonna follow and try and change the width, you see that the column becomes stacked. Like this. And that's it, that's technically what like that's technically what we also want. So let's copy this. Go back here and we're gonna say okay this is a column which is good but this should be a column of width four when we are on medium size. Whenever we are on size which is less than medium Let's make it a let's make it a whole column. Going back, now you see that the screen size is smaller than medium, and everything comes in a new line or a new column. So okay, when we change the size, things become in different columns, and when we have more space, this becomes column width of four. And with that understanding, I think you should be able to fix this issue that this is coming super super squeezed in. And if you pay attention, that's happening because of the padding that we have applied from the left and right. So let's see how we can fix that with this kind of understanding. We need to go to upload files. We are saying padding of five. Hmm. Let's remove this first and then let's see how it looks. Okay, little bit better, but not 100% awesome. And that's also because of the reason that we are using column seven. So if I go here and I remove this, I make it a full full column. Now this looks much better. Again, going back to the footer and trying to use this knowledge, what we want to say is we want to say, hey, make it a column of width seven only when we are on a screen greater than of medium size. Otherwise, keep it as it is. So now if I scroll here, we, the moment we go to medium size screen, this section becomes a column of width seven. So that's first thing first. Now we lost the padding. Let's fix that as well. So we want to say, so in general, we would like to have a padding of one. However, whenever we are on a bigger screen, I would like to have a padding of five. Like this. Okay. So in general, padding of one. Otherwise, I want padding of five. Nice. And I think we can copy this and put the same thing within the column. Now everything becomes super nice. So we have a padding of five from the row and padding of five here from the column. Now, if we switch back to a smaller screen, it becomes padding of only one, which is still not too awesome. So I would say it's just a matter of playing around and seeing what, what makes more sense for your app. But so far, I think this looks good. And with this, I hope that you learned a lot. And I hope that you were able to actually conceptualize everything that is there to get started with Bootstrap. And I th I hope you are excited because I am super excited because when I first learned Bootstrap, it blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is so amazing. I mean, now I can create awesome looking apps, um, you know, without even spending so much time. If you learned something today, then please go ahead and like the video. 
and of course please subscribe the channel if possible share it with someone who you think might benefit from this video and as always in case you face any issue do let me know in the comment section and i will try to help you and now it's officially done